Uh, so now this is the time we dissect the news um, of the week tonight. I'm joined by Jason Reed and Portia Berry Kilby. Uh, good evening to you both. Uh, let's start with, of course, the biggest story of the week. Uh, sh and let's ask, should the US have left Afghanistan? I was just speaking to um, Ali Mirage. He is unequivocal. It is not only the right move, but it should have been done a long time ago. Uh, Jason, what do you think of all of this? I agree with, with Ali Mirage. I think we should have left a long time ago. Uh, we have to decide what we want the role of the West to be in countries like Afghanistan, because as Ali was, uh, was making the point, if it's to do things like putting girls in school, obviously that was a very positive um, effect of our presence in Afghanistan the past few years. But if we're using that logic, we could invade any number of countries around the world. And invasion isn't a solution that we should resort to. We shouldn't be setting a precedent of when we, we see something we don't like somewhere else in the world, we invade and we put troops there and we make that into a long-term solution because it's not a long-term solution. It's not sustainable for us to have a military presence on in the long term in places like Afghanistan. And if we'd been, we and the US that is, had been unsuccessful for 20 years, there's no reason to think, in banishing the Taliban, there's no reason to think that the 21st year or the 22nd year would be any more successful. There comes a point where you have to admit failure. What do you think, Portia? Was it, was it more than just uh, giving more rights to girls and women? Was it also about uh, keeping the world safe, the world being a safer place uh, with the Taliban out? I mean, in the first instance, for sure, it was more, it, it was, they didn't go in to promote the rights of women and girls. Um, but after having made the country more stable, safer, they're there, they're hanging on, they had proposed to leave many months ago and it had come to an end sooner or later and their presence there seemed largely uh, in terms of soft diplomacy they had equipped the afghans with military equipment and now um mm. people are criticizing them for leaving girls behind and they weren't exactly promoting them really fairly in the first place um for the middle classes, the upper classes for sure, but in terms of the rural, the poorer girls and women, their life had pretty much remained unchanged despite the past 20 years. So do you think it's a good move? I think it had happened sooner or later. They could definitely have improved the ways in which they carried out the withdrawal, but it had to happen at some point. Jason, aren't you worried about this, this rise of ISK, this this attack, this suicide bombing just outside of Kabul airport where where US troops uh, were, were there, they were covering and protecting and and helping with with the evacuation of, of mostly US uh, US nationals. Do you think this is sending a message? Are you not worried that there could be a threat here in the West? Well, it's obviously awful what happened, but um, as you were saying a few minutes ago, we, we don't know what we don't know anything for certain about what's taking place there it could well be some kind of ruse by the taliban that they are doing a, a sort of burning of the reichstag like the nazis did uh, and then blame it on the communists type of thing in order to win a bit of favor um isis k of course their their whole shtick is that the taliban supposedly are too close with the west which seems like a bonkers thing to say but that's not something that we would have that's not a viewpoint we would have been exposed to so perhaps Whoever wanted to, whoever um, committed that awful attack, achieved what they wanted, and they've got us talking about okay, a future with the with the Taliban now. I mean, Portia, if if these militants see the Taliban as as too soft uh, in terms of how they deal and how they work with the West, and this is of course a, another militant group who who hates who hates the West, which is why we had to go in there and and get them out. If if I, ISK thinks they're too soft. What on earth does it mean about ISK? Portia. Yeah, I mean, ISK are hardly an ally, <laughs> neither is the Taliban. I think either groups both are hostile to the US, to the UK, to Western liberal democracy, so to speak. Mm. I don't think in an ideal situation, we'd be dealing with either of these groups, but similarly in other countries like Saudi Arabia, I don't think we'd ideally be working with people in those governments and neither are really promoting the values that we hold dear in the UK. Portia, do you think this is a huge loss, an embarrassment for US and UK troops? 
I think the way in which the withdrawal has happened is an embarrassment. The fact that so many weapons have been left and then taken over by the Taliban, the fact that the visa processing was such a de so vastly delayed is a sham. Um, but how much longer could it go on? It wasn't the US's job to support Afghan. Afghanistan had to show their own incentive as well and the political will to defeat the Taliban, which they just did not do. So Jason, what are your thoughts on, after 20 years of, um, 20 years ago, getting the Taliban out, 20 years of keeping them out, the US has not only okayed their takeover of Afghanistan essentially, uh, but also is now working with the Taliban in, in trying to keep down terrorist groups, of course, including ISK. Well, keeping down ISK is, is obviously a good thing for us to be doing. Um, what, however, that takes shape, even if that means, um, you know, it's also in the Taliban's interest to be keeping ISK down. So um, when you have uh, unspeakably awful groups like ISK, it makes strange bedfellows. Obviously, that doesn't mean we're going to be working with the Taliban or supporting the Taliban in anything else that they do in the country. Um, if the choice is between the Taliban or ISK, those are two unimaginably awful options to be choosing from. But at the same time, it wasn't a long term solution for Afghanistan to um, for Afghanistan's government um, to only exist based on the presence of Western troops. It wasn't something that was sustainable in the long term. It never would have worked. Now, of course, the withdrawal has been botched. We've seen that and it's been um, incredibly tragic as a result of that. But looking onwards, what we need to be focusing on, I think, is taking as many refugees as we possibly can, and that includes uh, Afghans as well as British and American citizens, so that we can just save as many lives as we possibly can and get as many people out who want to get out as we possibly can manage. Well, it also seems it includes also dogs and cats, uh, Portia. We've seen a pen farthing desperately trying to get more than 100 animals out of Afghanistan as well. <laughs> what did you make of that? I think that is appalling. I, if someone had given me the ultimatum, take me and my dogs and cats or leave me behind. Sorry, but why should British resources? Paul Shay, you're, you're getting a lot of um, animal lovers out there just very, very upset by what you're saying right now. Um, yeah, no, it is sad for sure, but there are more pressing issues. And I think lives should always trump that of animals. Um, I don't think it's really that much of a difficult decision and I would consider like seriously question anyone's moral compass if they were prioritizing cats over a child or an adult. Yeah, Jason, it's actually 140 dogs and 60 cats evacuated. Yeah, what, what do you think? Could that have been maybe the focus on 200 children getting out or is this, you know, we got to we got to look after the dogs and cats out there as well? It's very strange the last couple of weeks how much we've been talking about animals in this country. We had it first with Geronimo the alpaca who has yes. bovine TV and of course the campaign to save uh, we're to a, save We're Geronimo an animal loving from... nation it seems Jason. We are, well that's a, a polite way of putting it perhaps. We go a bit bonkers <laughs> when animals come into the picture I think. Um, it's, it's exceedingly odd that we have a situation um, where we have so many refugees who are crying out for our help and we're talking much more about dogs and cats than we are about the people. I mean, with, with Geronimo, the situation was the same. So many hundreds of cows are slaughtered every month because they have bovine, bovine TB and we want to stop an outbreak. But when there's one alpaca, um, then suddenly it becomes a huge campaign. And it's exactly the same thing, I think, with, uh, with the dogs and cats. It's obviously a tragedy um, what's happened to uh, the situation that Penn Farthing found himself in um, with all those animals. But it was also much more tragic when people um, we saw we saw you know harrowing stories of uh, mothers throwing their their babies over barbed wire towards American soldiers in an attempt to uh, to save their babies' lives. I mean, how desperate do you have to be to get to a situation like that? And yet, um, we're focusing resources in terms of processing, in terms of airspace, and so on, which is very very limited in the next few days on uh, on some pets it just seems ridiculous to yeah me. you're not alone jason uh, in your thoughts a uh, defense secretary uh, ben wallace has complained uh, that some of uh, pen farthing supporters have taken up too much time of his senior commanders dealing with this issue when they should be focused on dealing with the humanitarian crisis although to be fair portia he was also trying to get out 70 afghans who who worked with him and supported him over the years 
Portia. For sure. And <laughs> that is great. And those people should be aided. Um, but it's the idea of equating, they might even put like these rescue animals as the same importance as children. And I think we all, not all, but hopefully far too many people fall into the mentality of treating animals or their pets as their children and giving them the same importance. No. It's worth saying as well, sorry to, as... sorry to interrupt, it's worth saying as well, there's 70 Afghans who are working with Pen Farthing. As I understand it, they have not been rescued. They are still in Afghanistan, but the Pen Farthing himself and the animals are out, but the employees are still there. It's, it's completely topsy-turvy. Um, the one thing we've been told throughout this whole uh, palaver is that we would never, they would never prioritise animals over people. But when it came to the actual rescue mission, that's exactly what happened. All right, let, let's uh, let's move to e-scooters really, really quickly. Um, calls for maybe for them to be banned after somebody drunk was seen trying to get on on the motorway. Uh, are you a fan of e-scooters, Jason? Um, I, I don't know if I'd call myself a fan. I've tried them <laughs> once or twice. I don't think they're my thing, to be honest with you. But, um, when it comes to whether they, they should be banned, I don't think there's um, much of an argument for banning them beyond the sort of uh the you know the the stereotypical old man waving his walking stick in the air and complaining about what kids are up to these days it seems ludicrous that we'd be making it illegal criminalizing the use of electric scooters um there are always going to be accidents in this case as you say the person involved appears to be drunk um driving drunk is illegal i think it's perfectly reasonable that riding an e-scooter drunk should also be illegal but that doesn't mean we ban them i mean it, it's Riding an e-scooter is something that it's very easy to do perfectly safely. If I can do it safely, absolutely anyone can. Um, so making it illegal um, is is just a sledgehammer to crack a nut. So let's not make okay. banning Push things it really quickly, the, the new normal. I don't know why anyone would want to ride an e-scooter. They, they terrify it's the heck out of me, that's for sure. <laughs> it's kind of a pathetic excuse for riding a bike. Um, yeah, should they be made illegal no i don't see why i think people should just use the common sense and not get on a motorized vehicle after one too many pints um wear appropriate safety gear and it, you should be fine there we go good advice there portia portia uh, and jason really good talking to you on talk radio at you are